With our infinite mortality, we crawl out of hell to meet with an old master of torture, to slay the gods and rid the world of this unbreathable air on this episode of Graphic Metal. Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today, it's our top picks, in this case, for the months of April to June of 2024 for the sector of death or crossovers, but with death being the focal point. And yeah, given it's now mid-June, Got a bunch of brand spanking new albums for you, so get excited. (laughs) As always, presenting them as they were released. And we start with one missed uh, album from January before we move ahead to April. And speaking of April, real quick, you death metal fans out there, you will not want to miss Graphic Metal's next episode where we give you the best albums for prog rock and metal as the best overall album of april just happens to be borderline a death metal album so here's to death saints dispelled by master a death slash thrash metal album released on January 19th. Totally missed this one. So real quick, these old timers who originally came via Chicago, Illinois, all the way back in 83, some of the members initially were even in a band called War Cry before they decided to form this much more darker, aggressive a style of, of, of a band called Master. Despite being around for seemingly forever, and part of even the initial wave of death metal, they have always sort of stayed out of the limelight. Not entirely sure anyone really knows the reason why. Sure, they have always had rough production and minimal money to to, to work with. But you know, when you hear them, you gotta. There, there's some really strong albums, and they have a lot to, to offer. And on the on their latest, again, they conjure up some another really strong uh, disc. It's a hybrid between death and thrash, and absolutely worth your time. Uh, check and and if you like it, you should also check out their their back catalog as there's a lot of good stuff uh, to to listen to. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 86. <music> Funeral Sanctum. By Witch Vomit, a death metal album released on April 5th. Love the old school vibe. Another band who loves nicknames. The band consists of Filth on drums, Tempter on guitars and vocals, JC on bass, and CL on guitars. Tempter isn't the best vocalist, but we'll get the job done. I'm not a huge fan of this, but I believe those of you who crave, you know, the early style of, of death metal will definitely vibe with this one. Graphic model rating gives it a 71. Lifeless Birth by Necrot, a death metal album released on April 12th. I was fortunate to have seen this band live a few times back when they were just getting started in 2011. And just like what 
seemingly would become everyone in the death metal scene absolutely love their first two discs for those not aware this band immediately drew attention upon arrival in many ways you could argue are like the death version of power trip garnering instant praise charting quite well and ending on many people's end of the year list in from 27 to 20 2017 to 2020 they come via oakland california and fast forward are back for the third release and at first pass i gotta say they may have set the bar for themselves a little too high as this one feels a little flat but let's be clear this album and band still are miles ahead of most of the competition. We're talking the 1% here. In fact, you have to go to the level of like horrendous, that notch level above in order to get to something that, that has a better offering than what Necrod Necro has to, to offer. I don't even know how to describe it, but despite their you know generally obvious delivery from day one this 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 band just doesn't sound like anything else they have that it factor and just have a little bit more uniqueness to them their two greatest strengths has always been their maturity bonkers how good that they started off their career and second is their ability to sound equally like a death and a groove metal band in perfect harmony. Just listen to the song Drill the Skull and your ears will be blessed with hearing the full range and change in direction and how comfortable they are in both of them. Because of those two particular deadly punches, I find it incredibly difficult uh, for most metal fans not to dig this one. And whereas it may not be their best, still was good enough to be the best death metal album of the month of April. Graphic Metal Rating gives it an 86. Infinite Mortality by Replicant, a death metal album released on April 12th, another band on their third disc who also have gotten much praise for having a unique and innovative set style. In this case, this is more like technical avant-garde death metal and from a band coming via New Brunswick, New Jersey. Replicant approaches things in much more of an avant-garde, technical slash progish way. They are explorers, wandering through and exploring all sorts of different ideas. Think horrendous, but way more playful. Hence, again, their association with avant-garde, like other predecessors in that sector, like Dark Angel, Alchemist, Gorguts, Ulcerat, etc. have. It's, it's an album you will find yourself coming back to because each time you listen to it, you hear something different, which is always a joy. With only the poor vocals holding this one back and the only reason why it's a notch below Necrot. Graphic Metal Rating gives it a 85. <laughs> Cogulated Bliss by Full of Hell, a noise metalcore post-death metal album released on April 26. Full of Noise, I appreciate their creativity at times. Fractured Bond to, to, to Mecca, for example, is innovative. I also like their willingness to change direction and offer a bunch of different styles all in the same album. But F this, I'm out. I would much rather re-listen to like Dillinger Escape Plan. Look, look, I love many styles of metal and consider myself pretty open-minded, but I will continue to make this 
very clear. You can't have shit vocals. There are, there's no excuse. There never is. The vocals just cannot be that bad uh, where it, it's too distracting to the music. It shouldn't exist otherwise. And this is one of those albums. I just can't do it because it's just the band, the, the vocals are just that bad. I only put it on the list to make a point because shockingly, this is a very popular band and this album is no different. Look, Metalheads, Metalheads, we need to have some control here. It's never been about just raw intensity. You have to have some resemblance of coherent, relatable vocals or don't have them at all. And until we do a better job supporting bands that put more of a focus and emphasis on that particular capability, we're just going to keep ending up with this crap. I, I, I am disturbed by the trend as of late with these type of bands being the ones that are popular right now. It's shame on us metal fans. We need to do better. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 39. Altar of Disgust by Crawl, a death groove metal album released on May 3rd. Get down on your knees and crawl. You want intensity? Here you go. A band that most of the time sounds a lot like Entombed. So if you miss those Swedish bastards, Crawl is essentially a newer, younger version of them. Crawl also come via St Stockholm and Kalmar, Sweden. So who knows? Maybe one of their kids is in this band. Any, anywho, but we do know that their name at least come from an entombed uh, song. In this case, it's the one it's coming off their sophomore release from uh, Cladstein. They are not nearly as good as their originators or disme disem dismember, but comparable to other modern bands, they are not too shabby. Love that they bring with them the weight and the buzzsaw sound that made uh, the initial wave of groove death so beautiful. Graphic Metal Rating gives it a 75. Calamity by From Dying Sons. A metalcore album released on May 3rd. God awful music. I repeat, do not listen to this one. Just appreciate the innovative album cover design. You can see why. Super clever to make it literally look like a PlayStation game from the 90s. Kudos. It actually does such a good job that to be honest, I kind of just assumed it was a game and ignored it. <laughs> Killing for Revenge by Six Feet Under, a death metal album release on May 10th. Another quick review. No joke, this might just be the worst album of the year. I seriously doubt anyone has ever heard of the game uh, called Bunko. It's a dice game. But if you have, you would be familiar with what is called the Booby Prize. Despite its strange name, it is awarded to the person with the lowest score, and thus they earn, they get the, the, the pot of money that they put in from that night. In other words, there can be some advantages to being the worst. But in music, there is no booby prize. This band needs to stop immediately. They're, this no longer is even worth a ha-ha. Graphic Metal Rating gives it a 19. Shaman by Helen. Death Thrash Metal Album released on May 17th. 
Our hearts and prayers go out to all of Ukraine. And it is with much respect to see and hear these gents, much like all of Ukrainians, continue to fight and push through the darkness and evilness going on. Hell on, at least when it comes to metal, is a beacon of light through the darkness. Heck, for a while, they couldn't even get access to their own inventory to fulfill orders. I mean, for most of us out there, remember how lucky we are. Not everyone is as fortunate. But as I'm sure the band themselves would be the first to say, let's focus on the music. Because this one is a hell of a band. Interesting how similar them and, and Death, both, who started around the same time, have a unique particular style of music at the intersection of Death, Thrash, and Groove Metal, released their, their albums uh, within a couple weeks from uh, apart. Only difference between them and Death is Death tends to focus a little bit more on industrial groove, whereas Hell On lean more to death metal, hence them being on this specific episode. And of their albums, all of them are, are strong and compact with some of the best drumming you will ever hear, thanks to Lishley. Seriously, I challenge anyone to give me a drummer better than him right now. Alexander is a very strong vocalist that demands your attention. Their bassist calls himself Slayer. How fitting is that? <laughs> and Helion, where their name, Helion, is actually, uh, you know, the guitarist, speed, groove to perfection. That's actually where they got their, their name from. Actually, I'd say this album has the most groove they've ever had which is pleasant to, to my ears and is why I would argue it's their, their best album to date. Love it. And any Sepatura, Slayer, Gojira, as mentioned, Death uh, fans, you're absolutely going to love this one and this band. And please, please support them. I say this with all the bands, but them in particular for obvious reasons. And proud to say it is the best death metal album released in the month of May. Graphic Metal Rating gives it an 88. God Form by The Last of Lucy, a technical death prog metal album released on May 17th. I'd very much like to know who Lucy is, but it might just represent like the jazz side of the band because that is what you have here. Straight up technical death metal fused and interwoven within it is jazz and breakdowns from metalcore which appears to be what the band first started up as which also explains why it's not getting too much uh you know love in the market probably because it's very different what were they what they originated as but nonetheless the vocals are awful the production can't hold up against their chaos and the strong structs and song structure is just they just feel like there's no purpose to them. It feels random for the sake of just being random. I do not recommend this unless you are a big fan of just chaotic music. Graphic Bell rating gives it a 61. <laughs> God Slayer by Vredhammer, a blackened death metal album released on May 24th. From God Form to God Slayer we go. The once this once deadly solo project by Per Villa, who has since added some additional members, has been on a tear 
uh, up to this point. With both Violator and Vepris making my end of the year list, this one still hits hard and many of you out there will like it. But for me personally, it's a letdown. New drummer, nickname, uh, Frostbitten, is not doing it for me. His drumming comes off as stale and methodical and sounds like Purr is once again just using a drum machine. It's like he's trying to pull off like a Gene Hogan type style and failing. This plus Purr, who I have not minded his vocals in the past, just come off on this one dry and uncomfortable. It feels and sounds forced. It's as if like this album was created by each of the members just kind of doing their part and it's just being slapped in. There's no there's a lack of chemistry, joy and soul in this one. I know that sounds harsh, but I'm just trying to explain why it is that I love their first album so much, but this one's just not cutting it for me. Something just consistently feels off. Uh, and I think it's because of those two reasons. It's a damn shame. I was really looking forward to it. Still some strong elements. And interestingly enough, if you are a fan of the first two albums from Lamb of God, you might actually dig this one because there's some kind of weird vibe between them happening here. Graphic Bell rating gives it a 75. <laughs> Love at First Bite by Cluttered Flesh, a brutal death metal album released on May 24th. Brutal death is probably the hardest subgenre to pull off without it coming off as, well, cheesy. It's like when you order a pizza with three different types of cheese on it, plus they put cheese inside the crust, including cheese dipping sauce in with the box and you even can dust on powdered cheese on top at the table <laughs> but this but this bite no no pun intended <laughs> it gets the job done for for you know those craving just that layers of of death piled on just remember don't expect the the, the best vocals graphic bell rating gives it a 69 a mass to the grotesque by the troops of doom a death slash thrash groove metal album released on may 31st mixed feelings here on this one on one hand better than 80% of what's out there. But on the other hand, they're trying a little too hard to be basically Sepultura and Slayer. Heck, they named themselves after the first Sepultura single and even are from Belo Horizonte, uh, Brazil. It's sort of of a super group. Probably never heard of the musicians, but they all have been around and have played in many bands up to this point. Between all of them, they probably have played for somewhere like over 40 bands. So this is a well-oiled machine, and it shows, and you can hear it. Despite it being only their second album starting just back in 2020, trying my best to ignore that that obvious similarities that they have to Sepultura and Slayer, I began saying that I would rather listen to this in a heartbeat over almost anything else out there today. Again, the the power of strong vocals, ladies and gents, like just it's a game changer. It makes it so much more enjoyable. You can connect with the music, even as brutal as it is. It, you can still connect with it better when you actually can relate to the vocals and what is being said. And, you know, that that has to count for something. God uh, uh, of Bizarre and the Grotesque are standouts with the later 
honestly being the one time where they sound like a unique band. Enjoy this appetizer to the main course coming June 21st. Graphic Bell Rating gives this one an 86. Torn from the Jaws of Death by Severe Torture, a death metal album released on June 7th. An old torture is back after 14 years. Hell yeah. These guys were killing it before they took a long break. It's been 14 years since their fifth disc, Slaughter. They started back in 97, coming via Boxtel, Netherlands. And yeah, it's now their sixth. Not much needs to be said. It's standard, typical modern death metal but it does such a freaking good job at it it has everything you want above average vocals thunderous double clicking pace drumming melodic groove laid riffing only nitpick is it gets a little exhausting and repetitive as an album given essentially all the songs are pretty similar to one another but unlike me, most of you out there probably aren't going to mind and will love this. I definitely recommend this one as with their entire catalog, quite frankly. Graphic Metal gives this one an 85. <laughs> Dead End Nerves by Torture's Lobby, a death thrash black metal album released on June 7th. A cool crossover here. Our ears don't always get a chance to, to, to hear something that meets at the intersection of death, thrash, and black metal. Shocking. Another album with poor vocals. But this one at least is tolerable given its delivery is more thrash-like and the energy and uniqueness this album blasts in our ears is noise. <laughs> Debut from this el this band coming via Death's First Door at in Tampa, Florida. Bright future awaits this band and respect its uniqueness and diversifications that the songs can offer. As such, Graphic Bell Rating gives this one an 83. Unbreathable by Ad Pares, a death groove technical metal album released on June 7th. This air is unsafe. Two for two. Albums that have a sick blend of styles. In this case, we got death mixed with groove and technical. The easiest way to describe this one is if Fear Factory went back to being a death metal band. Sadly, Axel is not Burton, who let's just take a second to remember how just freaking good he was as a singer. How many singers? have been able have been capable of pulling off that level of change in direction that he was capable of not many probably un, you know 20 at that top of my head i can think nonetheless axo the sun does a serviceable job but let's not beat around the bush this is yet another really strong musical album with vocals that ruin the vibe they also smartly add some instrumental songs, which are great uh, pace setters. Kind of wish they even done more of them, to be honest. But yeah, outside of the vocals, love what this band has to offer. They come via Brux France, which it's always cool to hear, you know, French band because it's not as common. They started back in 2008. It's their third 
my first time hearing them. So I plan to check out their other, their first two, heard good things about their second one actually. So looking forward to it. Just don't hold your breath for too long. <laughs> Graphic Bible Rating gives it an 84. Cutting the Throat of God by Alsret, a technical prog death metal album released on June 14th. What an album title. Gruesome. <laughs> Yet another band I get frustrated with and wish that they would do any of the following three. Do what symphonic metal bands do and release two versions. One with and one without the vocals. Get rid of the vocals altogether or hire a new vocalist. Actually, in their case, a vocalist just in general. I get it. Keeps the cost down to just keep it as a three-piece band. By the way, they come via Auckland, New Zealand and started back in 2002. Up to this point, they have released seven albums and have conjured quite a cult following with much praise up to this point. The three bands consist of Jamie St. Marat on drums, Michael Hoggard on guitars, and Paul Killen on bass and vocals. All, all three, from a musical standpoint, are awesome. The problem is when Jamie and Michael brought Paul into the band in 2005, someone thought he could double up and do bass and vocals. But imagine... For a moment, what this band could accomplish with better singing, screaming in the mix. For at least me personally, every damn time I listen to this album, as with their other albums, I can't get past that part. That's a problem. And I can't and I can't be the only one that thinks that. I just can't. Rant over. If you don't mind or can shut off your brain to not listen to the vocals, you're going to love this album. And lucky you, because one more time, this is super strong, complex, longer length, technical, prog death at its finest. But since I can't turn off that part of my brain, I have to dock them for the poor vocals. Graphic Bell Rating gives it an 81. Defilers of the Light by Darkened, a death metal album released on June 14th. We have half of the month still to go, but this album is going to be hard to beat. At this moment, it is the best death metal album of the month of June so far. Darkened comes from both Sweden and Canada, forming just in 2018, with this being disc number three. And what an album it is. Unlike a number of albums on this list, Gordon Olson is more than a serviceable vocalist, commands your attention with vigor, and able to hold his notes longer, almost, dare I say, singing like <laughs> that allows you to coherently hear what he's actually saying and therefore you connect with the music that much more what a strange concept that is and it fits so well with the incredible musicianship from hempa uh, linus tobias and para another band with all its members coming together even though they've all played in many bands up to this point. Of course, it is death, but it always feels like something more than just death. It has a lot of melody, breakdowns, and overall change of directions and experimentation not 
normally commonly found in death. This is its secret sauce. That and each member are incredible at what they do and their chemistry is sensational. I can't recommend this album enough. Again, shocked if this doesn't remain as the death metal album of June 2024. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 89. And that was the list. Many of the other subgenre videos are already available for your listening pleasure. Up next is the episode for Prog, Rock, and Metal, which contains two best overall albums for the month of April and May, so you will not want to miss it, especially for you death metal fans out there, as the one is borderline a death metal album coming very very soon and here are some other of our videos to check out until then cheers and keep on rocking